Mrs. Igdal, you were in the Brihat. Did you have any intentions of going to Israel? Yes, he did. What happened? It happened that after then we learned that uh, it was a lieutenant, Bob Smith, and uh, he was one part of our family. And uh, I remembered my aunt's uh, an address. I gave him the address. He came in contact with her. And I had here an older sister, my brother-in-law, and two boys. She left in the 1939 before the war broke out. We wanted to see her first. And we decided that my husband, all the brothers are going to uh, America. For the time being, we will go to America too. And we came to America. You mentioned your husband. When and where did you meet your husband? I met my husband in ghetto. In his name? Erving, I-R-V-I-N-G, Igdal, I-G-D-A-L. Which ghetto did you meet him in? Kovno, Slabotka. And when were you married? Uh, when we became the freedom in 1945, end of 1945. How did you meet back up with each other? He survived from uh, Dachau by General Eisenhower when he gave the freedom to the people. He survived and he checked in a hospital, he was sick. I was at a time in Vienna, Austria, in the Jewish hospital after an operation. By the Jewish people from uh, München, Germany, they sent out the Ulietans, who, brochures, who survived the, the concentration camps. And my sister saw their, their David and uh, my husband and the other two brothers, they survived and they are in the Munich. And from that, we came in contact, started to write letters. He wants to come to me, but he was very sick, and I was very sick. Then we waited until I recovered. I went to see him. How did you arrive in Munich? In How did you Munich? travel to Munich? By the train. So you were reunited? Yeah. And when did you find out about the fate of your mother and your sister? We find it out through, like I mentioned before, through the lawyer, our look. But you knew by um, now. Yeah, but now we knew already that they are dead. And what happened to your plans of going to Israel? You had a family we member thought in America? We it will come a time we will reach America, and after them we will take our time and we will reach Israel. We wanted very much to go to Israel. But I don't know how it turned around and we came to America in 1949 with General Below, with the ship General Below. Spell it, please. General Abel, uh, okay. G E N E R A L, General. Below, B E L L O. You. you and your husband arrived on this ship? Yeah. In 1949. And where did you land? We landed in New York. And then we came here to uh, uh, Norfolk. What brought you to Norfolk? Because I had one sister. She came in 1939 before the war. And the other sister came in 1947. She with her husband, Charles Burke. Anna Burke and Charles Burke. What kind of work did you and your husband do when you arrived in Norfolk? When we came here, my husband, he got in a factory or something to do. And from uh, Norfolk, we left for Hudson, New York. And we worked in uh, Springdale Mills. All kind of weaving and pershing and preparing everything for clothing. For clothing? Mm -hmm. And then when the mill uh, went out in bankruptcy, closed up, we came in, 19, in the year 1954 back to Norfolk, which we bought a little small uh, grocery store, and that was in the 42 old one bounds ferry route, and we worked out there for 20, 21 and a half years. What was the name of your grocery store? Erving's Market, I-R-V-I-N-G, 
market, M-A-R-K-E-T. And you both worked in the market? Both in the market. Do you have any children? Frida was born in New York State, in Hudson, New York. One daughter. But we sent her in college, and uh, she became a pharmacist. Mrs. Igdahl, your experiences from the war, what did it teach you about life and about human beings? To love each other, not to do no kind of harm to one to the other. We still were punished so bad, and we still believe in God. And I think it's happened. Then we're praying to God, God help us. It's not important. It's nothing is important. Important is only the good health, and people should be good one to the other, love each other. And not do their harm is what they did to us. So people shouldn't do that. All the horrors were they brought to the Jewish people, they brought to themselves. They thought they'd go and kill all of them, but we survived a little bit. And I hope it will get more and more. They will live forever. What is the one or several great unanswered questions about the Holocaust that you think about at night when you're alone? When I'm thinking, when I'm alone, I cannot make it up why they did this to us. But when you think right, and you see one crazy man, that he could care on everybody, millions of people, and do the things what they did, but they shouldn't do it, makes you scared. It should never happen again should never happen again to no kind of nation. What do you talk to about with God at night? What I'm talking with God, I'm talking the same thing when I'm praying. I'm asking God for good health and always the question, what did you do to us, God? Why did you kill our families? We are so lonely, especially when it comes a holiday. It's awful, terrible for us people. And I believe that everybody from the Jewish people got the same feeling. They would like to see a mother or father. Even, even today, they wouldn't be alive. Cousins, uncles, aunts, home used to be filled up with friends. You don't have nobody. You just can invite the people to be friends. But your blood, nobody's around. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that you would like to include? No, I believe I said it enough. Maybe uh, I got plenty to say, but it's too much to take for me. Thank you, Mrs. Zigdor. You're quite welcome, and I appreciate very much, and I wish you luck and good health. That's my daughter, Frida Marlene Igdal. She's my only one child. And she's a pharmacist. She stays home now with me and helps me out a lot. Mom, I guess I've actually never told you this. It's really quite terrible. But I often wondered if I would have your strength and your courage because you were an amazing force in the war and you saved a lot of lives and you were there for a lot of people. And I don't know if I could ever have done what you did. Sometimes a bit of your strength comes through. I've, you've never seen it, but sometimes it does. And the other person is my father, who was an amazing, joyous, happy man. You don't find that often among Holocaust survivors. He was just a bubble. He was totally uninhibited. He would go dancing off. At my wedding, he went dancing off. He didn't have a speech for anyone. He just started a whole run and just danced off by himself. It was amazing. And I failed to tell him, too, before he passed away. He was the one who told me all my Holocaust stories. My mother would read me Mother Goose, but my father would only tell me Holocaust stories or stories of the family. And then they became, we used to number them, 
you know, we used to call him Shakia Mises. That was the town he was from. Daddy, tell me number one. Daddy, tell me number two. Until one time when I had chicken pox, I'd really had quite enough of sad little tales. And I said, Daddy, I don't want any more numbers. You have to read me Mother Goose now. And so he sent Mother in, I think. <laughs> huh? Right. And I don't know. I, I have a lot of friends or children of Holocaust survivors. We all have our tales. I think all the tales are very similar. Some know, some don't know. Some want to talk about it, some don't want to talk about it. Some blame all their problems on it, which I really detest, because you can't. And I don't know. What do you think? See, Is that about it? That's it, about it. But thank you, darling. I don't I think you know how much you've meant to me. See? And how much you meant to me. Oh, good. Thank you. That's nice to hear, too. Good. That's my father, Moise, and my mother, Frada. When she was pregnant with the first child, after she was born, she born a, a, a girl by the name Edith Shapiro. Mm -hmm. Do you know why the picture was taken, Mrs. Udall? And now I don't. Do you know where? I know in Pocroy. What is your mother wearing around her neck? All gold pieces. Her jewelry. Her Adonis? Is one piece her Adonis? It can be, yeah. She got, uh, she had the uh, chain and she had bracelets and she had rings. She had everything. And that was her dowry? Can be. The dollar egg. That's my sister, Liba Shapira. She got perished with my mother in 1941. How old was she when the picture was taken? I believe she was about 20, 23 years. Do you recall why the picture was taken? What? why the picture was taken? No, they just, it was a time when uh, people used to take pictures and she took the picture. They just loved to take pictures and... Uh, Can you tell us about the garlic that you mentioned? My mother used to put all this garlic around her uh, throat that she used to say she's so pretty maybe they will put on a bad eye on her and that's the people who used to be superstitious and they used to believe in that and then she used to take it off she used to say it's a bad smell mama a bad smell mama that picture is my grandmother Raisa and my grandfather, uh, Leib, my brother, my youngest brother, Lionel, and my sister, Hannah. They were the parents of my mother and take me for Croy. Do you know about what year? No, I don't remember the year. I cannot recall the year. Because I was very little. I don't know. That's my husband, Erwin Gigdal. He's one of nine children. They survived five, but not one is alive anymore. The rest was killed by Hitler. He's here, I will call by the 836. I miss him very much, I love you. What occasion was the picture taken for? Just a picture take. Just play. He got back in his clothes, he felt he's dressed. He feels good and he was taking the picture. 
Was that little picture we just brought out up to be good at? That picture is original from Pakroi. I don't know in what year it was taken, but it was from before the war, maybe 1935, 1936. I just got them from friends, but they had them in South Africa. Now I don't know how Pakroi looks. That wasn't in the back of our house, it was in a Hamas home. But does it matter? No, you tell the truth. I thought yeah. it was the back of your house, as yeah. Frida said. Okay, yeah. tell the truth. Yeah. That picture is in the back of the house of my friends, Nahama Rabinovich, who she was perished in, the, in Pokroi, and the whole family. The first from left is me, Ruth Igdal. The second is Hannah Bork. The third one is Liebe Shapiro, perished in the, with my mother. In between, the last is our dog Bobik and my younger brother, Lionel Shapiro. That's all taken before the war. I cannot recall what year that was. Okay. The bottom, that picture is taken in Pokroi. The bottom from left, that's me, Rivka Shapira Igdal. The next one is my sister, Liva Shapira. She perished with my mother. Higher the line from left is my sister Hana and my little brother Lionel. I cannot recall what year that was taken. What are you wearing in the picture? We're wearing, I believe, uh, a school clothes. That picture is from my family. From left to right is Tante Taiba. Uncle Shmuel, Boba Chaya, and an aunt that it came to visit from America, Mary Leibman. Then my uncle Laser, my cousin Arthur Lang, he lives in Massachusetts, and my aunt Sosa, except my cousin and my aunt all of them were perished by Hitler. A matter of fact, when we came in Massachusetts after the war to visit my aunt, my cousin aunt Arthur asked me a question. He says, Rivka, tell me the truth. I love you very much, but how come is that young Hank survived? And not one from my family. Not one of our sister, not a brother, not a mama, not a daddy. I says, hey, Arthur, I don't have words. I cannot tell you. I start to cry terrible. I didn't have words to explain them how it was that we could survive because we escaped and they didn't have a way how to escape. That is the group, a Zionist group. We took before the war. From the left side is Rachel Sands. On the bottom, she's still alive and lives in Philadelphia with her husband and children. Far more 
a couple children where they left to South Africa. Then it's my sister Liba, Hinda Volk, and myself to the end. All from Pakroy. Hashomer Atzoyer. That is a picture, one group we took after the war in 1945. We worked in a Bricha. I, my sister, my brother-in-law Charles, and all the friends, apart are in America, apart left for Israel. They are very dear to me, and I love them all. That is me, Ruth Igdal, with my husband Erwin Igdal, taken in 1945 after the war. Where were you? In München, Germany. Do you know why it was taken? We just took a picture of us. Just to be happy, we are alive, we survive. Right. You say it's a that that Sorry. Sorry. That is a picture taken in Hudson, New York, after I gave birth to my daughter, Frida Marlena Igdal. I and my husband, we enjoy it very much. She's looking at us and we are smiling at her. I love the picture very much. That was in Hudson, New York, right here in America. That's my daughter, Frida Marlena Igdal. She uh, graduated from MCB, School of Pharmacy, in 1975. I love you, Frida. She became a pharmacist. 